What's up guys, Jay's Two Cents here and I've got a special guest, this is Joe. Joe is actually the son of a close family friend of my wife's and uh, he's a homeschool student. So his mom thought it would be a good science slash, I don't know, technical learning to maybe learn how to build a computer. You've always wanted to learn how to build a computer. I have for a long time. And you've never built, touched, messed with any computer parts before? No, the closest thing is a barbecue. And how old are you? I'm 12. 12, all right. Well, we're gonna see whether or not I can competently teach a 12 year old how to build a computer that has literally never touched anything before. We interrupt this video to bring you a special message from iFixit. No, we interrupt this interruption with this interruption about new stuff from iFixit. We should even grab this card, but inventory sucks. Fix the inventory problems with iFixit. Whoa, don't drop it. Can't fix that with iFixit. Just kidding, yes you can. Wish you could take iFixit with you anywhere but your pockets aren't big enough. Introducing the new Moray. And the new Minnow. Take them with you anywhere. So get iFixit for your loved ones or just get them for yourself. So because this is for school, I have to be a little more professional, a little more methodical, and learn you something in your brain juice. All right, so computers. Um, first things first, we need to understand the parts of the computer, right? So do you know what this is? Not at all. This is the processor. So this is the brain, okay? Everything the computer does is because of this guy right here. Now the brain needs to be attached to something, right? Your head is attached to your body, your motherboard, is the body. So now you've got a brain, but your brain needs memory. It needs to know what's happening, what it's doing, what it's gonna do, what it's already done, and that's what the memory is. So for, we'll put the parts list down here below because the parts that we're using today are a little less important than about the learning process. Uh, we need a way to keep that cool. You, you know, you go, to the, you go to the gym or you run or you work out, because I know you like to work out with your dad and stuff, so you get all sweaty and stuff, right? So you gotta cool down. That's the heat sink. So that's job is to keep the processor cool. If the processor gets too hot, it shuts off and then obviously bad things happen. That's essentially our main components right there. You've got a motherboard, processor, memory, and a way to keep it cool. Now you need a place to put your programs and stuff, right? Yeah. So that's all gonna happen on what's called storage. Think of this as like the shed in the backyard or something. You put all your tools and stuff in there and you get them when you need them. So that's what these are. These are just two different kinds of hard drives, which are where you can keep your programs, windows, your games, pictures, music, all that stuff, right? Speaking of games, what games do you like to play? I like to play Fortnite, Minecraft, and Roblox. And you currently play those on a laptop, you said? Yes. Oof. Our graphics card. This is technically a bonus piece. This is not necessary to make a computer run if the processor already has a graphics card built into it. But those that are built in processors are not very strong. GPU, or graphics processing unit, is designed to take those graphics and accelerate them make them faster. I, look at the way he's eyeballing this. He knows what he's looking at right here. <laughs> I'm gonna put this over here. I'm starting to get a little scared. I think he's gonna steal it. <laughs> Our power supply, this is kind of the boring part. Everything needs power. I can't think of a body part that this would be akin to. Heart. The heart, yeah, I guess the heart, pumping blood through the system. These are our fans that we're gonna be putting in here. The fans, so this case right here, by the way, we did a video on this a week or two ago where we actually added these panels here to add more fans and stuff because keeping everything cool inside is important. So it gets hot in there. You've played in a laptop. You felt how hot a laptop gets. Mm -hmm. Imagine how hot it gets in here. So these fans are designed to just get the hot air out, get cold air in. If it gets really hot, can I cook food in there? People have cooked eggs on CPUs before. Mm. <laughs> I like this guy already. <laughs> so with all that said, are you, are you ready to start building it? Definitely. Do you like Star Wars? I love Star Wars. Do you like Stormtroopers? I do like Stormtroopers. So white and black works pretty well. The New Order or? Imperial, Empire, which era are you into? Imperial. Good man. That's why, that's why his mom and my wife are friends. <laughs> We're building on a wood surface, which is fine, but if you're building on a metal surface or anything else that can cause static, like carpet or whatever, um, you wanna be careful because any static shock could potentially hurt something, although parts are a lot better today at, uh, else in there? they're a lot better today at not being so sensitive with that. The processor, by the way, is a uh, Ryzen 5 5600X, probably one of the best uh, gaming CPUs out right now. It's a popular fan favorite because of the fact that it's price to performance is really good and no, AMD did not sponsor this video. Now, do you remember what I said the CPU does? The CPU is the brain? Exactly. He's a fast learner. He's gonna give a little J a run for our money. All right. That was really smooth. <laughs> I know. Starting to, think, starting to think I'm getting punked here. He's like, 
<laughs> Done. Yeah. Anything else? I'm bored. So what we might as well do next is because we know that this storage device right here, it's called an M.2. All that means is the, the kind of connector that it is. So it goes underneath the cover here. Oh, we already got one in there. Well, we're gonna take that one out because you need to install it. <laughs> How does Jay just lose M.2 drives and not even notice? Have you seen our iFixit ads? iFixit! And then the magnetic cover. There you go. There you go. All right, so we got storage and a CPU on there now. Now the memory I'm using, and this is, this is mostly for the audience than the learning process, because we're using the Dark Rock Pro, or Dark Rock 4, tall heat sink on the memory would interfere with this. So we're using the Vengeance LPX DDR4 from Corsair. It's a low profile. Technically low profile means it's just not any taller than the DIMM themselves. So this uh, 16 gigabyte kit will fit in here in the socket slots we want them to go into, or the DIMM slots, without interfering with the cooler. Now before we put this on there, I wanna get the bracket for the cooler set up. Remember what this does? It's the fan. Right, but what is it cooling? The PC. Well, CPU. And that's one thing that like, you'll find a lot of old people do. My, my parents did this all the time. They would say, my CPU is acting weird. It's like, no, your computer's acting weird. Well, it's, it's like saying my engine's acting weird when you have a flat tire. <laughs> a little rant I had to put in there. <laughs> and the first thing we need to do is we need to get our, these screws right here ready to go. So be careful when you open them. They like to roll because they're little nylon standoffs. Like the, see, there it goes. I like how he's not scared. He just gets right in there. Mm -hmm. Mini Jay's built one. Little Jay's built like four. But they still are real like dainty and delicate about it. He's just like duh, duh. <laughs> if, I had, if I gave him pneumatic tools, he'd use them right now. There you go. This is why I like AIOs, but I also want this to be uh, something different than we normally do. Normally we put water coolers on everything, but we've got to appease to the air cooling crowd as well. So this See how it's got those teeth? Mm -hmm. Those will just kind of bite into that heat sink right there. We'll be resting that down on there like that once we put the thermal paste. And then if you look on that side, you can see now we have something to screw it down. Remove that plastic piece, so go ahead and pull that off. Satisfying. <laughs> but you didn't relish in it, you just were like Psst. So what you're gonna do is you're just gonna basically squeeze every bit of that out right on that Z. Just make it like a big, like a big circle. A little more, squeeze. They don't want to give you a fraction of an ounce more than they need to. All right, that, that'll work right there. That's plenty. So you're just going to set it down in the, in the middle. Then you're going to line those holes up with those holes there. Perfect. That's fine. You don't have to squish it down yet. It's going to kind of slide around. And now take those screws and that screwdriver and you're going to screw down each side. This is kind of the perfect demographic for what we were doing with the Scholars Collective, by the way. Um, if you guys haven't seen those videos, make sure you check them out. This is what we want with the building station where we're gonna have components that, you know, quite honestly, don't work, because if they worked, they more than likely wouldn't work after the amount of people that are gonna to be touching and handling and building and taking apart. But we want them to get comfortable with the feeling of tightening down a bracket, or installing a CPU, or feeling the tension lever, or installing the RAM, because RAM, that's probably the scariest part for a lot of people other than the CPU, is the fact that you've really gotta push those dim uh, slots down hard to get them all to like crunch into place, and that's the best way to describe it as a crunch. But this, this hands-on experience, that's the most important part, is getting comfortable with the way things feel, how to know when they're tight. I think that one's tight. Yeah, that's good. Whoops. And I promise that didn't hurt nothing. See, he freaked out for a second there, but that's the point of all this. You guys don't, I think most people don't realize just how robust these parts are. All right, so there we go. We've got ourselves a cooler, a CPU, and some storage installed. But now we need to put the fan on here. And this is the part that honestly I kind of hate. Kind of take the fan away and kind of turn it. See how it gets you some extra slack here, like that. Then you can kind of pull it to where it needs to go. And then you're gonna have to use your fingers and really kind of pull. There you go. Well, I'm over here telling him it's gonna be all hard and he was just like, click, click. Now when we pick up the motherboard and stuff, by the way, I'm the, I will always pick it up by the heat sink. This is a firm connection right here. And it's a lot better than putting your hands back here and potentially cutting yourself. If we look at the, the top up here, you'll see AIO pump. That stands for all-in-one pump. That's for a water cooler. We don't have that. But you see where it says CPU fan? Mm -hmm. 
So we're gonna plug this guy into the CPU fan. Now you see these two little slots? This makes it so it can only go one way. There you go. Now this is part of the cable management magic of why I had you put this right here. This cable, we don't wanna see this. So we can literally just tuck it underneath our cooler. How much better does that look? It looks way better. So if it were sticking up there, you'd see it. And it would look like something built on PC building simulator and we don't want the cables to be visible. All right, so what we can do next is go ahead and put in our memory. Now I won't confuse it too much or put too much in your head at the moment. This is what's called dual channel memory. What that means is you have two sticks of RAM or two channels of RAM, A and B, that can simultaneously or at the same time be accessed by the CPU. There are four slots here because this allows you to use two sticks per channel. But if you ever, have you ever driven down the road and noticed there's another road next to it going the same way? Right, it's kind of like that. So why are you laughing? Because you asked a 12 year old, have you ever driven down the road? <laughs> if he's anything like my kids, they're staring out the window the whole ride. <laughs> You're gonna notice stuff. The best way to think about it is the two on the left are A, the two on the right are B. The biggest mistake is people will get them slotted in the groove and then they'll push it and then they'll leave it. But it won't be in all the way. You heard that crunching sound, right? Yes. Yeah. So that's why I said earlier, they crunch into place. Until you get that sound, they're not in all the way. There you go. See, you gotta push pretty hard, huh? Mm -hmm. You can see why that would freak people out. I just feel like I, I broke it every time I hear that crunch sound. Everyone thinks that. Doesn't matter if you're 12 or 70. They always think they broke their RAM. That one's satisfying. So that one's in all the way. I think this is about all we can put on the motherboard right now before we install it. Look how good that looks, all that matte black and stuff. So we will set this aside because now we have to prepare our case to receive that stuff. Now this case right here is a case we used a couple weeks ago where we added these fan plates. We took a big angle grinder and a cutting, a cutting wheel and we cut big holes in this case and we added these plates on there. And I told the audience that I wanted to do a build in this now. So now you're the one doing the build. But what I wanna do first is I wanna get these fans installed in the front, the top and the back right here and maybe get those all wired up. This is where we kind of go be a little bit beyond a basic build. A basic build, they would normally just use whatever fans are already on the case and then plug those in and there you go. So we've got these five fans, right? Two for the front, two for the top, one for the back. And we need to get those installed first. The only extra step you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to like get these little fan grills sort of. Do I do that first or do I do the fan itself? You, you kind of have to do it at the same time. Like what you can do is you can sort of hold it against the fan like that. That way, you know, you or your brothers don't go sticking their fingers in there, you know. Definitely getting harder. Okay, so now you can let go. Now the fan won't fall out. So you're gonna have to kind of slide it under that fan. There you go. So you'll know it's in when that's like flush and lined up perfectly with that hole in the back. There, did you hear that little pop? So that was that little nub made it into the hole right there. So these are the screws. We'll start right there. And just kind of lightly turn it and then you should feel it start to get snug. All right, so to recap now, you've got the motherboard in, the CPU is obviously installed, the cooler, the M.2 and the RAM and the case fans. So now we stand that up. Look at that, it's starting to look like a computer now. So what we're gonna do next is actually gonna be our power supply and all the power supply plugs. And like I said a minute ago, should have actually plugged in the power to the motherboard first before we put this fan in because this fan totally blocks it. After we get the power supply in, we get to do all of our cable management, graphics card, and then we'll have to do our SATA drive as well, this, this guy. And then we get to push the power button and see, did it work? That's the scary part. That's everyone's scary part is, did I break it? Will it turn on? If it doesn't turn on, how will I know what's wrong with it? Because if you're, if you're a new builder, if you've never built a computer before, you're probably gonna be following along with some YouTube videos or tutorials online or whatever. And then most people are just at that point like, I don't know what to do if something doesn't work. Yeah, you do. You watch Jay's Two Cents. So this is the part that sometimes takes the absolute longest for people and is also somewhat the most boring, but it's also the most rewarding and that is cable management. So rather than bore you guys, we'll kind of do this one in a more of a montage style. And then uh, when we come back, we'll be putting in the graphics card and we've seen if this thing actually boots. Montage!
So now that we've got like half of the cable management done, we've got the power plugs in, the CPU plug is in, the power supply is installed, we've cable managed sort of the front plugs. Before we do the fans and stuff, we want to go ahead and get the graphics card installed. That way we can have the PCI Express cables here, then we can start uh, kind of tying everything down. We haven't done a, a build using an AMD graphics card in quite a while, but AMD is perfect for 1440p. The 6700, oops, I saw that. Bit of a beast. I feel like the Strix cooling and stuff's a little overkill for it, which is why it's awesome. I feel like his, his, his eyes when he opened the box is anyone's eyes right now with any graphics card. <gasps> Oh, you see? He started to like rip it off and then he was like, wait, I'm supposed to enjoy this moment. There's a texture in that. All right, before we turn it on, I just want to say good job on putting it all together. You weren't scared of any of it. In fact, you were probably a little bit more handsy on some of it than I would have been, which is fine. Um, everything looks great. Let's go ahead and I'm turning on this power switch, which turns on the power supply. Go ahead and hit the power button and let's see if everything works. Okay, all fans are spinning. Three hours later. Well, it's still looping. Ah, there we go, there we go, look. All right, big high five, like you mean it. All right, so our IQ though, right now at the moment is not giving us any sort of lighting. So I just wanna double check. All right, so after a little bit of finagling, uh, we ended up switching all five fans to the ML120 RGB um, because for some odd reason, and I don't know why, the other RGB fans we had from Corsair, and I'm not even sure exactly which, which ones they were, didn't work with this controller. I have no idea what that was all about. So. Joe, why don't you go ahead and give us the honors once again, hitting the power button, so now we can see it all lit up. See, that's better, right? Definitely. So how do you feel about building your very first computer? It felt great. It's good to learn from a master. It's true. <laughs> I ask anyone that it's their first computer build they've ever done before, what do you think was the hardest part? The hardest part would have to be putting putting on the fans and the covering. Aside from that, because that's not a typical experience, most cases like I showed you in the back, they're already built in, that was a custom piece. So aside from the fans. I would have to say putting this in. Probably the scariest part. It's the single-handed most expensive part of the build. Um, I think if anything though, if, any, if the audience can take anything from this video is that, and you especially, that's not as delicate as it seems. Like sure, it's delicate, but it's not like, oh my goodness, I looked at it wrong and it broke. You know, you can be pretty pretty hands-on and rough with it. And then another thing too, is you said your birthday is in two days, right? Yes. Well, we knew that, because your mom set this up ahead of time. This is actually your computer. This is your birthday gift from your mom. What? So don't, thank you, so don't say thank you to me. You can give your mom a big fat hug and kiss when she gets here. But uh, yeah, this is your computer. Holy moly. That. Now that you have this computer, I expect you to beat my daughter in Fortnite. Okay. <laughs> so anyway, again, give me a high five. Happy uh, 13th birthday? Yep. Turning 13, man. Kids get old fast. Hope you're happy with this. Um, I'm super happy. Unfortunately, you can't take it yet. We have to get Windows installed. We have to do our stress testing on there. We gotta make sure that there's no problems. Uh, so I already told your mom that. This should be ready for you probably by tomorrow. But yeah, we got a tower for you. We got a monitor, new keyboard and mouse, all that stuff. So Joe, happy birthday. Say, uh, say thank you to the internet because- Thank you, internet. I'm sure they're saying thank you about your birthday, but they're also saying, screw that kid, because I want a computer. You guys can have a computer too. Just be best friends with my wife. That sounds really wrong. <laughs> Let's just, you guys can have your own computer too, someday. Thanks for watching, guys. As always, we'll see you tomorrow.